Hey everybody, it's Professor Davis here again from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I'm going to answer a subscriber question about uh, ring flips in cyclohexane molecules. Uh, someone has specifically asked if I could talk a little bit about the boat and twist boat conformations and what those are all about. So I've rebuilt my cyclohexane in a chair conformation using my darling model kit, which we all know I don't think is really all that darling, but it's good for this purpose. There it is. And we've already discussed the fact that it can be in one of two chair conformational states, either this one or the ring flipped version, where I simply change the headrest and footrest and get myself a new chair. But that process actually isn't as simple as being two states. Now, you might have heard me say this before, that we like to do two state approximations in chemistry uh, because it is the easiest thing in the world to model. It's also never really true. And this is no exception. So here's my chair conformer one more time of uh, cyclohexane. And you notice I've got two red atoms here. I'm going to explain that to you in a moment. But for now, let's just take a look at this chair conformer. Okay, now in order for it to get from one to the other, I would have to flip both my headrest and footrest simultaneously, going through a completely planar ring with 120 degree bond angles. Now this has 109.5 degree bond angles, and it would much rather not give all those up at once. So the actual mechanism of this, this ring flip is, now either the headrest or footrest will begin to move up. And that portion of the ring becomes planar while the other one stays up out of the plane. Now, once it gets here, if it goes back down, naturally we're right back where we started. But if it continues, we can arrive at another conformer which has perfect bond angles. All of the carbon-carbon bond angles in this new conformer that I've made are exactly 109.5 degrees. I hope you can see that from the way that I'm holding it. So that's great. From a, an angle strain perspective, this conformer is every bit as happy as the chair. And we call this conformer the boat because it looks a lot like a boat. It has a bow and a stern, and it's got a little place for you to sit there while you're sailing along on your molecule. Now, the problem with the boat conformer is actually twofold. The first is that there's a steric collision going on here between these two substituents, which I have labeled in red. We call these the flagpole hydrogens in cyclohexane, or flagpole substituents in substituted cyclohexanes. And as you can see, they're much closer together than anything else. So there's a bit of a steric hindrance here. Now the real killer in the boat conformation is this though. You notice I have four coplanar atoms here. But because of the twisting that I've done to make it into the boat, I've created a situation where if I look at it in more of a Newman projection style, you can see very clearly I've got eclipsing interactions on both sides here along these two particular carbon-carbon bonds. And it's those eclipsing interactions that make the boat conformation relatively unstable. So it's not going to stay like this uh, for very long at all. And in fact, what a boat can do in order to, to get it a little bit more stable is it can move these two flagpole hydrogens to the side to try to avoid one another. And in doing so, I want you to watch what happens to the dihedrals here where I've got my steric clashes going on. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to move my hydrogens out of the way from one another. And when I do that, look what happens. There's a distortion there. We call this the twist boat. And if I line up one bond at a time here, you can see very clearly, oh, I'm over here, that the dihedral angles are no longer zero. They're not perfect but they're not zero. So we call this the twist boat conformation. And it's actually a little bit more stable than a boat. So let's go through the whole process of ring flipping now in terms of everything that we've looked at so far. And I'm going to start from my chair one more time. So from the chair, I have one come up into a boat or twist boat. And I can have an equilibrium, in fact, right, between twist boat this way and twist boat that way. And we can do this as many times as we want to until eventually my other side comes level and then heads on down. And now I've completed my ring flip. So the significance of the boat and the twist boat conformation are really all about just the mechanism of converting one chair into another through the ring flip transition. But it's important to understand the boat and twist boat and why they exist as well, because they will affect the rates at which these equilibria establish themselves. So again, these are the really important ones from a thermodynamic standpoint. But as far as getting from this conformation to this conformation quickly, you have to ask yourself, how likely is this to turn into a boat or even a twist boat? Because sometimes they're really not because those flagpole hydrogen positions have something big. And when they do, that interconversion from one chair to the other, 
It's pretty slow. So that's why we care about boat conformations, even though they're really not that stable. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you need anything else, just ask me another question. I love to answer them. Thanks for participating, subscribing, liking, and coming back for more. I'll see you guys next time.